Winter creeper is a popular ornamental ground cover with glossy evergreen leaves, but this plant can spread out of yards and invade natural areas, causing problems in forests. In this edition of Pesky Plants, we're going to learn a little bit about this invasive plant, how to identify it, and how to manage it. What is winter creeper? The species Euonymus fortunii is a common invasive vine that's native to Asia. You'll mostly see it creeping along the ground, forming a dense mat that excludes other plants. But you might also see it growing as a vine up trees, or even as a shrub growing over fences or downed logs. It's a popular ornamental plant, and there are many different cultivars, including some that are variegated with different colors, as well as related species. But no matter where it's initially growing, birds are going to eat the fruit that it produces when it's growing as a vine and spread it to new locations. As a vine, it can cause damage to trees, making them more susceptible to wind and ice damage when it's growing in the canopy. But ecologically, the biggest threat posed by winter creeper is the dense ground covering mats which crowd out other species. They can also inhibit the growth of seedlings and prevent tree regeneration. You'll commonly see winter creeper in urban parks and forested areas, especially after disturbance. For example, it might pop up after the removal of another invasive plant like bush honeysuckle. Winter creeper was there just waiting for the opportunity to take off. Identifying winter creeper frequently involves looking at those distinctive leaves that are evergreen. Those leaves are opposite each other on a stem and they are dark green and glossy with a thick texture. The edges are toothed and on top those leaves are dark green with this light green venation and on the other side they're going to be a light green almost white color. The growth form of winter creeper really varies a lot, and it looks slightly different depending on how it's growing. As a ground cover, you're going to see dense matting layers of vines. These leaves tend to be small and glossy, and they may turn purplish in color in the winter. Now when it's growing as a vine, leaves tend to be a little bit larger and less glossy. And it's only then, when it's growing as a vine, that it's going to produce flowers and berries. Now the flowers might not look like too much. They are small and not particularly distinctive, um, but the fruits are going to have an orange fleshy exterior that bursts from this yellowish to tannish papery covering. Now there are plenty of look-alikes to winter creeper, both invasive and native species. Some invasive look-alikes that you might see around are things like English ivy, which again is used ornamentally as a ground cover, as a vine, but can invade natural areas and is evergreen. Things like vinca, which can do much the same, and it has these distinctive purple periwinkle flowers, another potential threat to our natural areas and woods. But then there are also some native vines that you might see growing up into trees or growing as a ground cover, things like Virginia creeper, which you see here, as well as poison ivy. Um, so while those are not necessarily desirable in all settings, I certainly don't desire poison ivy growing next to my house. These are native species that have been here for a long time and are not necessarily invasive threats. There are also some related other species of Euonymus in the same genus as winter creeper that can look kind of similar, although they have a more shrub-like growth form. Um, including this one right here, burning bush, which is an invasive species. Um, you might see it used ornamentally, but it can invade natural areas. Um, the leaf form looks quite similar to winter creeper, but this is going to be growing as a shrub and having really distinctive uh, bright red fall color, and it's deciduous. Um, and then there's also another native Euonymus species. Uh, Wahoo is, is one of those that is uh, a native species in our areas and not a problem. Uh, not an invasive issue. So when it comes to managing winter creeper, as with managing any invasive plant, it's going to require patience and pers persistence. Management depends on how much area is impacted and how the plant is growing. 
So because it only produces flowers and seed when it's growing up a, a, a tree as a vine, this is typically one of the first stages to target in your management. At least you can prevent it from producing more seed that are gonna invade more areas. So you can cut the vines and prevent them from growing up that tree. Now you do wanna be really careful not to damage the tree or the bark when you're cutting. And there's really no need to pull those vines out of the tree when you're doing that. You could risk um, damaging the tree or pulling something down on yourself, but cutting a chunk out of those vines. Um, now, when you're dealing with more of this ground cover situation, that can be pulled up either by hand or with tools to assist or manage with repeated cutting or even grazing. Um, you could mulch it or solarize smaller patches covering them to kill what's underneath. Um, but because of this matting nature of the vines of winter creeper, just a heads up that this can take a lot of work and will require follow-up as it will re-sprout from remaining root fragments. So here's an area where you can see it was covered with winter creeper and then it was pulled up both by hand as well as using rakes and other equipment. And then that winter creeper that was pulled up was hauled out because if you leave it right there, it's going to continue to grow and uh, sprout, so need to take it and uh, chip it or mulch it somewhere else. Um, now, while that can work great depending on your situation, especially for those smaller areas, management of larger infestations typically involves the use of systemic herbicides that will also kill the root system. Um, this is done as a foliar application, but it can be a bit tricky because of the waxy cuticle of the winter creeper leaves you'll need to use a seed oil and a surfactant that can overcome this. For example, um, something like a foliar strength application of the herbicide triclopyr plus a methylated seed oil and a non-ionic surfactant um, can be highly effective. Here you can see an area where that was used um, with the uh, green evergreen winter creeper on the left side and on the right side, the area that had been previously treated, you can see uh, the dead winter creeper there, as well as the spring wildflowers. We have some trillium that are coming up in the area that had been treated just a couple years ago. Previously, it would have been a thick blanket of winter creeper, and already we're seeing a big response of the native wildflowers that are there. A thing to note about winter creeper is that you can take advantage of the fact that it has evergreen leaves while most of our native species don't. So take advantage of it being evergreen and do your foliar herbicide application in the winter if the weather is warm enough, that is. Um, you can get excellent control of winter creeper but not damage native species that lose their leaves in the winter. Now long term, you're going to want to continue scouting and management. New seeds are going to be deposited by birds and those will need to be managed. So in addition to these management techniques, we now know that winter creeper is invasive and not something you want to be using in your home landscaping because it can escape from there. Instead, think about some non-invasive alternatives to winter creeper. For example, if you're thinking about ground covers, something like wild ginger that you can see here that really fills in densely and nicely, but is not going to cause those same problems in natural areas. Thanks for joining me today and learning a little bit more about winter creeper. If you want to learn more, make sure to check us out online and follow us on social media. Thanks for fighting invasive plants and promoting our healthy and diverse native plant communities.